Good evening. It is my great pleasure to welcome you tonight as we come together to invest Dr. David Tanasi and Dr. Qingping Yao with their respective endowed positions in microbiology and immunology and rheumatology. And I am privileged to be here this evening as we honor Dr. Yi Zhang and Su Ling Zhang for their steadfast and generous support of Stony Brook. I don't need to tell you that this year, university life doesn't look exactly the way we're used to. And I won't hesitate to admit that I'd like to be together in person as we normally are for formal investitures, glowing with pride for our newly endowed faculty and expressing our gratitude to the friends who have invested in their work. But take a moment. Those feelings are still there. This is an exceptional occasion for all of us at Stony Brook, and I couldn't be happier to be here. The Zhang Family Endowed Chair in Rheumatology and the Zhang Family Endowed Chair in Microbiology and Immunology recognize the culmination of years of hard work, innovation, and boundary-breaking research on the parts of Dr. Tanasi and Dr. Yao. They are undoubtedly among the most brilliant minds in their respective fields. At this moment, perhaps more than any other in recent history, we recognize how much our global health outcomes rest upon sustained and rigorous research in infectious and immunologic disease. Dr. Tanasi and Dr. Yao, you are emblematic of the greatness of our ambition and the attainability of our highest goals. We are also here to commemorate the meaningful friendship between Stony Brook and Wai Yi and Su Ling Zhang, whose commitment to our university has proved transformative. Wai Yi and Su Ling, we are so grateful that you recognized in Stony Brook a partner that reflects your own drive for innovation and excellence. Your friendship with us did not begin as alumni or members of the faculty. It began entirely with your own foresight and vision. You saw in Stony Brook not just an institution worth supporting, but one worth championing. Your support through these endowed positions underpins our ability to assemble a faculty of prodigious talent who come to Stony Brook knowing that they are surrounded by a community of aspiration and dedication. A community that prepares for, believes in, and helps build the future. Beyond your own personal investments in Stony Brook, you took your belief in us one step further when you helped us raise funds for an endowed chair in honor of Stony Brook professor and Nobel Prize winning physicist C.N. Yang. You reached out to prospective donors among your former classmates at the University of Science and Technology in China, and your work in forging those connections was an inspiring act of trust in us, one that we will never forget. Indeed, the time, energy, and trust you have put in Stony Brook has enabled so much of our important work. Endowed positions are a vital as asset to the university. They are an essential springboard to pioneering discovery, allowing us to recruit and retain some of the world's finest minds in pursuit of our greatest goals. They allow us to support these incredible scholars and researchers with the resources and community they need to excel. They are an investment in Stony Brook. But they're also an investment in the future. The future came quickly in 2020, 
a year full of newness and questions and rapid change. But I believe our university was able to meet it with elegance and intelligence. The fact that we are all here today honoring and celebrating is a testament to that. Thank you for joining us remotely via Zoom for this very special occasion. And now I'd like to invite Senior Vice President for Health Sciences and Dean of the Renaissance School of Medicine at Stony Brook University, Dr. Kenneth Kashansky, to introduce our Zhang scholars. Thank you, President McGinnis. It's my pleasure tonight to introduce our first faculty member, David Tanasi, PhD, Professor and Chair of the Department of Microbiology and Immunology at the Renaissance School of Medicine at Stony Brook University. David also serves as Director of the Center for Infectious Diseases and of the Laboratory for Comparative Medicine at Stony Brook. David has focused his entire research career on one essential topic, understanding how bacteria cause disease. He and his colleagues have worked tirelessly to find new ways to treat bacterial infections as the continuing misuse and overuse of antibiotics imperils their effectiveness, creating what has been called superbugs. In 2016, David and 23 other researchers nationwide were among those receiving $5 million in grants from the National Institutes of Health to develop non-traditional therapeutics for bacterial infections to help address the growing health threat of antibiotic resistance. At the time, none other than the now world famous Dr. Anthony Fauci, director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, was quoted as saying that new strategies are desperately needed to treat patients with antibiotic-resistant infections that are often deadly. The NIH funding came to David and his team under President Obama's National Action Plan for Combating Antibiotic-Resistant Bacteria, indicating both the seriousness and national importance of his work. The increasing resistance to antibiotics, coupled with the slow pace of developing new antibiotics, threatens decades of progress in fighting life-threatening bacterial infections. Unless new drugs are developed, the World Health Organization predicts that the worldwide death toll from infections once cured by penicillin could reach into the millions by 2050. The fact underscores just how important David's work is for the future of humankind. He and his colleagues are creating new methods of combating infectious organisms. Rather than trying to kill bacteria, as antibiotics do, they are seeking ways to paralyze bacteria's ability to maneuver and hence reduce their pathology by disabling a key appendage of the bacterium. Throughout his career, David's research has been published widely in leading peer-reviewed journals. In recognition of his contributions, he has been named a fellow of the American Academy of Microbiology, an honorary leadership group of the American Society for Microbiology, the largest professional organization in his field. He's also a fellow in the American Association for the Advancement of Science. During his time at Stony Brook, David has also mentored 15 PhD students, helping to create the next generation of world-class researchers in academia and industry. Most important, however, is the fact that David's work will help us avoid a future in which there are no treatments for drug-resistant infections. Nearly 100 years after Alexander Fleming's discovery of penicillin, antibiotics have reached a critical crossroads. Non-traditional therapies will be essential to complement or replace antibiotics that are losing their effectiveness as microbes evolve and become more resistant to life-saving drugs. So a hearty congratulations to David and a heartfelt thanks to my friends Y.E. and Su Ling Zhang. Now I'd like to invite President McGinnis to conduct the formal investiture. Dr. Tanasi, 
Would you please join us on stage? It is my distinct privilege to confer upon you the title of the Zeng Family Endowed Chair in Microbiology and Immunology and present you with this certificate, which reads, Stony Brook University proudly recognizes your outstanding contributions in teaching and research, your accomplishments in the fields of microbiology and immunology, and acknowledges the distinction you bring to the university as the inaugural Zhang Family Endowed Chair in Microbiology and Immunology. Established in 2011 through the generosity of Su Ling and Yi Zhang, PhD, this chair enables the university to recognize a world-class scholar and educator in the Renaissance School of Medicine. Presented at a ceremony of investiture, September 17, 2020. And now, I'd like to invite Dr. Tanasi to say a few words. Thank you, President McInnes, Dr. Kaushansky, and to all those in attendance. And of course, my deep and sincere gratitude to Yi and Su Ling Zhang. This investment by the Zhangs in the Department of Microbiology and Immunology and the Renaissance School of Medicine demonstrates the transformative power of philanthropy, enabling the innovative research required to advance the understanding and treatment of disease. Interactions between Yi and my department began several years ago when I was serving as vice chair and Dr. Jorge Benach was the chair. The connection between Yi and our department was fueled by common interests in understanding mechanisms of disease and, in particular, the functioning and misfunctioning, in the case of disease, of our immune system. Yi's thoughtful and generous spirit and his commitment to the health and well-being of others was clear from the very beginning of our interactions. Our department has a long history of leadership and excellence in infectious disease research, investigating both how pathogens such as viruses, bacteria, and fungi cause disease, and how our bodies fight off infection and mount a protective immune response. The discussions with Yi and the support from the Zhangs helped to crystallize and formalize strategic planning within the department to grow in the area of immunology, to become a center for immunology research at Stony Brook that would not only boost our world-class research, but would also cross-fertilize with basic and clinical research occurring in other departments at Stony Brook, building on our ecosystem of innovation and collaboration. Concrete evidence of the impact of the Zhang support can be seen in our hiring over the past few years of two new faculty members into the department who are performing cutting edge immunology research. These are Dr. Brian Sheridan, who joined us in 2015, and Pawan Kumar, who joined us in 2017. These new faculty build on our expertise in host pathogen interactions and provide the foundation for a continued trajectory of excellence in immunology. Another fitting recognition of the Zhang's support is the recent change in our department name, which was formalized last fall from the Department of Molecular Genetics and Microbiology to the Department of Microbiology and Immunology. This change was made to better reflect the expertise and research areas of our current faculty and the vision of the department moving forward, a vision that is shared and supported by the Zhangs. The ultimate goal of the work we are pursuing, in addition to making fundamental new discoveries on the biological and molecular bases of disease, is to bring about better therapeutics and treatments to address the range of ailments rooted in infection and immunity. To cite a pressing current example, we are now bringing the full weight of our expertise to bear on the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and actively addressing key questions to develop new treatments that will hopefully enable a much needed safe and speedy return to a semblance of normal. I am honored and humbled to receive the Zhang Family Endowed Chair in Microbiology and Immunology and again express my gratitude to Yi and Su Ling. I must also acknowledge the many others who have helped and supported me, beginning with my parents, both of whom are scientists themselves. They instilled in me a love of learning and provided the support and encouragement for me to pursue my path. My parents, my brother and sister, and my extended family and friends have all been a great source of guidance and inspiration. 
I have also been the fortunate beneficiary of amazing mentors and colleagues throughout my education and career. One of the outstanding qualities of Stony Brook is its supportive and collaborative environment, and I have certainly benefited from this during my tenure here. I am grateful to my colleagues in the department, the Center for Infectious Diseases, the School of Medicine, and University. One person I must single out is Jorge Benach for his steadfast mentorship, guidance, and friendship since he first helped recruit me here a little over 20 years ago. The opportunity to serve as a mentor myself is one of the great joys of academics, and I am indebted to our students, and especially to the members of my laboratory, for their inspiring dedication and hard work in the pursuit of knowledge and discovery. Finally, my wife Kate and two children, Miles and Joseph, have provided the critical love and support throughout my career, understanding the commitment required to pursue this path while helping me to stay focused on life's important joys and priorities. Many thanks to all of you, and thank you once again to Yi and Su Ling for your generous support. Thank you, Dr. Tanasi. Now I would like to invite Dr. Kenneth Koshansky to introduce Qingping Yao. Our next scholar is an equally distinguished member of the faculty of the Renaissance School of Medicine. Dr. Qingping Yao is a highly and widely regarded expert in the study of systemic, inflammatory, and immunologic diseases. As chief of Stony Brook's acclaimed division of rheumatology, allergy, and immunology, Dr. Yao specializes in rheumatology and focuses his care for patients with auto-inflammatory diseases and periodic fever syndromes. I'm not sure Qingping knows this, but my very first scientific paper was on one of the auto-inflammatory diseases, familial Mediterranean fever. And I am sure that he would say that apparently somewhere I went astray and became a hematologist. Dr. Yao is a professor in the Department of Medicine and director of the Center for Auto-Inflammatory Diseases, where he pursues clinical and translational studies of these perplexing and difficult disorders. Among his significant contributions, Dr. Yao discovered a previously uncharacterized disease now named Yao syndrome. I must say that it's a rare privilege and opportunity in academic medicine to have a disease named after oneself. But I will also add that it's better that it's named because you discovered it and not that you suffer from it. Yao syndrome is an auto-inflammatory disorder presenting with episodes of fever and abnormal inflammation affecting multiple organs, particularly the skin, joints, and gastrointestinal system. Because of Qingping's and others' work, we now know that the syndrome is linked to the NOD2 gene mutations, which stands for nucleotide binding oligomerization domain containing protein 2. I know, catchy name. But NOD2 is critical in the regulation of inflammation, as it recognizes bacteria that invade the tissues and is also associated with other inflammatory diseases, such as Crohn's disease of the colon a devastating condition affecting millions. Under Dr. Yao's leadership, the Center for Auto-Inflammatory Diseases at Stony Brook University Hospital has become one of the few centers in the United States to offer expert knowledge and management of these disorders, supported by multidisciplinary care and groundbreaking research. As part of the Department of Medicine, the center provides specialized high-quality care for these patients. Molecular genetic analysis is often involved in the diagnosis of these diseases as well. Proper diagnosis and management requires expertise and clinical experience as they can be complex and challenging for physicians and patients often struggle to find specialized care. Since joining Stony Brook in 2015, Dr. Yao has cared for local, national, and international patients with auto-inflammatory diseases who have been referred to him due to his expertise and reputation in this field. Qingping has authored many publications on the clinical and basic study of rheumatic diseases, including rheumatoid arthritis, Shogun's syndrome, lupus, and auto-inflammatory diseases. He also serves as a member of the International Society of Systemic Auto-Inflammatory Diseases. 
Stony Brook's reputation has been burnished by Dr. Yao's extraordinary expertise, clinical care, and research, and by his national and international leadership in advancing new knowledge and treatments for autoimmune and autoinflammatory disorders. So congratulations, Qingping, and another hearty thank you to Yi and Su Ling. Now I invite President McGinnis to conduct the formal investiture. Dr. Yao, could you please join us on stage? It is my distinct privilege to confer upon you the title of the Zhang Family Endowed Chair in Rheumatology and present you with this certificate, which reads, Stony Brook University proudly recognizes your outstanding contributions in teaching and research, honors your exemplary service to the field of rheumatology, and acknowledges the distinction you bring to the university as the inaugural Zhang Family Endowed Chair in Rheumatology. Established in 2017 through the generosity of Su Ling and Yi Zhang, PhD, this chair enables the university to recognize a world-class scholar and educator in the Renaissance School of Medicine. Presented at a ceremony of investiture, September 17, 2020. And now, I'd like to invite Dr. Yao to say a few words. Thank you, President McNeese, uh, Dean Kosowski. Dear Hua Yi, Xu Ling, and the family, thank you for your generosity. We truly appreciate your kind support and enthusiastic champion of scientific research on autoimmune diseases. Respected President McNeese, Dean Kosensky, Department Chair Dr. Yang, colleagues and friends, it's really a great pleasure and privilege to receive the academic honor. Congratulations Dr. Tanasi for the same honor. I'm grateful to so many people and my alma maters for providing fine training and work environment during my journey of academic medicine career. This journey wouldn't be possible without my family's support. I want to take the opportunity to thank my wife, Susan, for taking good care of my family, particularly during my busy time and providing intellectual insight at times. Let me take the opportunity to briefly introduce the division of rheumatology, allergy, and immunology. This division was established in 1978 and has a tradition of research excellency particularly in 1990s, with the largest NIH funding in the history of the division. Over the last five years, this division has been expanded by recruiting excellent faculty. The Center of Autoinflammatory Diseases here is one of the very few in the United States. The center provides specialized service to nationally referred patients and offer semi-credit educational programs. This center has also provided a good opportunity to perform groundbreaking research. In our division, there are basic research programs on the role of complement in lupus, hereditary angioedema, and cancer. And these programs have been funded by NIH grants and run by Professor Gabriel Havitt. We also have clinical research programs on autoinflammatory diseases. To do translational and basic research, funding is key. Thanks to the process and benevolent endowment funds from the Zhang family, we have planned to recruit a research scientist. Along with our current faculty researchers, we want to expand research programs, including inflammatory myopathy. These programs aim to investigate 
the fundamental mechanisms of certain autoimmune and autoinflammatory diseases and to develop potential new therapy. In the end, successful research products depend on collective efforts of a team that consists of faculty or researchers, funding or philosophy, and leadership. We all work together to accomplish the great cause we all believe in. Thank you all. Thank you, Huayi Shuling, again for your generosity. Thank you, Dr. Tanasi and Dr. Yao, for all that you have done for this university and for the world, for all that you continue to do. Congratulations to you both. Yi and Su Ling, we are honored by your generous philanthropy. Your confidence in us has been instrumental to our continued growth and excellence, both at the Renaissance School of Medicine and at the university, and has allowed us to build connections across the globe. With your trust and support, Stony Brook has become a place for visionary talent. And now, it is my great privilege to present Yi and Su Ling Zhang with this certificate, which reads, with deep gratitude, Stony Brook University recognizes your extraordinary generosity and splendid support of excellence in teaching research, and scholarship, reflected in your establishment of the Zhang Family Endowed Chair in Microbiology and Immunology and the Zhang Family Endowed Chair in Rheumatology. Presented at a ceremony of investiture, September 17, 2020. And now, I will turn the stage over to Su Ling Zhang, who is speaking on behalf of Yi and the Zhang Family tonight. Thank you, President McGinnis and Dr. Kosensky. We are happy to join you remotely tonight for this special occasion. Since we moved here 25 years ago, having a great hospital in the neighborhood has always been on our top wish list. About 10 years ago, the opportunity came when Jim Simons led the effort to fund the university and especially the medical school for significantly improve the university and medical school. We joined the effort immediately and funded an endowed chair for microbiology. Years later, we funded another endowed chair for rheumatology. Today, both endowed chairs come to their ceremonial inauguration. All eyes are on David and Chimping now. We are confident that they will continue to deliver great progress and make their already outstanding departments even better. Thank you so much, Yi and Su Ling. We remain deeply honored by your faith in us and are proud to count you among our truest friends. This concludes tonight's ceremony. Before we part, I'd like to say just how grateful I am to be at Stony Brook University. I look forward to your partnership, your support, and your counsel as we navigate the uncharted territories and worlds of possibility that lie ahead. <laughs>